Did you get your first order from Cubbies and you are super excited and you have your Mighty Hoop ready to go? You get your first Dumbbell Elephant out of the box and all of a sudden you're feeling overwhelmed. Wait a minute, what have I gotten myself into here? How do I hoop a Dumbbell Elephant ear on my Mighty Hoop? Well, if that's how you're feeling, you've come to the right video. My name is Michael Poole and I'm with Pools Embroidery and I'm going to share some tips and techniques with you today on how I hoop and embroider a Dumbbell Elephant on my Brother Persona embroidery machine. So please stick around while we get started. Okay, here we are. We've got a couple of elephants that are already complete and I'll just show you those. These are going in a gift shop, so we've kept it pretty generic. We've got the baby boy and the baby girl. And we'll be doing another baby girl. And my first tip is to use the same color of bobbin thread as your top thread. It just makes it a nicer looking result since the embroidery is going to be seen on both sides. Some people do like to open the seam and embroider the ear and then close the seam back up so that it's not seen on the back. I don't think that's necessary for me personally. It's just my option not to do that because I don't have time to take care of all that and I may, may end up making it look not as nice when I sew it back together. I just feel like the embroidery, as long as I'm using the same color of thread, it doesn't look bad to me. It looks nice. So, with that said, I will show you what we'll be using to do this pink elephant right here. Our supplies are going to be Water Soluble Stabilizer, WSS. This is the clear one, it's not like the fabric. We will use one layer on the bottom, underneath the ear, and one layer on the top before we put the top hoop on. This stabilizer, I get it in a roll. It's perforated at every eight inches and it's eight inches tall. Works really nice. I've also made a template on a piece of three ounce cutaway that I put on the ear to get the placement lines. So that works out really nice. I don't have to use my ruler every time, but I do still have it in case I want to check my measurement. We'll be using the Mighty Hoop. It's the 5.5 inch Mighty Hoop made by Midwest Products. This is the bottom hoop and this is the top hoop. All right, so let's get down to business. I'm going to show you the techniques. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is putting the template on the ear. And you might not have a great view of this, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I've got my water erasable marking pen and I'm going to mark the center of the ear with my pen once I feel like I have the template on there in the center. So that looks pretty good. We'll go mark that first ear. There's the dot. And we'll do the second ear the same way. We just flip the template over, get the second ear. Mark the spot. Now that we have that done, we will start to hoop it. So this is the fun part. What I do is I'm up against a counter. I have the elephant up against my belly and the counter, and I'm just going to squish it with my belly. And I've got my bottom hoop and my first layer of WSS. Again, this is not the fabric type of WSS, it's the one that's clear. Sometimes called a topper. So I'm trying to get as much of the ear, and I may end up having some of the elephant's head in the hoop, and that's okay. We just wanna get it so that it looks like our spot that we marked is in the center of the hoop. So as close to center as we can get it, and lined up. I'm trying to line up the edge of the head, the edge of the ear. I'm trying to use that as my guide so that the uh, hoop edge is straight with that. Now I'm taking my second piece 
of water soluble stabilizer, put that on the top. The important thing is to make sure that both the top and the bottom go over the entire hoop. And now I'm going to place the top hoop on. It is magnetic, it's going to snap into place. I want to try and get the outer edge to snap first, and then I will squish down on this part to get that in there. And what I've done I think it's over a little too far, so we're just going to go through this process again. You have to pry the hoop apart. I let it uh, move the ear, and it just got too far off the hoop so that the center wasn't near where it needed to be. So we'll just do that again. Put our top layer back on. Make sure it looks like it's lined up. Snap it into place. And then I'm sort of just leaning back away from the elephant so that it has room to expand. And because it's bulky over on this edge, we can pull some of the loose WSS out toward the edges and then push down on this edge so that it's nice and tight. So here's what it looks like once we've got it in there. You've got that little gap at the edge, but our dot is near enough to the center that we don't have to worry about it. This technique works well on an ear that's not going to be filled in all around. And I say that because we don't have the outer edge. You know, we can't get too close to the edges in a Mighty Hoop. We're working with a 5.5 inch Mighty Hoop but we only have roughly 4.7 inches to work with. But this is perfect for what we're doing because we just want girl written on this ear, embroidered on the ear. And then on the back side also, we've got that gap right there and the WSS is filling in that gap, which is perfect for what we're trying to do. Remember what I said about the bobbin thread. We want the bobbin thread to be the same color as the top thread so that the back side looks nice if you're not going to open up the ear. That's an important step. We don't want to forget to put our same color of bobbin thread in the bobbin. We are now ready to embroider. I've gone ahead. I've got my bobbin thread the same color as my top thread. We are using the pink, light pink thread and I'm working with a Brother Persona embroidery machine. This is a home machine with a single needle, but it does hold four spools of thread for convenience. So I'll be using this machine, and I'm going to show you what I've done on the machine, if we can keep the glare away. I've got the design loaded into memory. So I press the memory button, and then I have the right side of the ear is girl, so I want girl in my selection. And what I did is I stored this on my machine. So first I brought it over on the USB stick and then I saved it to memory on the Brother machine itself. And I originally had the girl design rotated so that it was rotated 90 degrees. And then I rotated it 10 degrees to create that offset. So that's what I've done. I just went into rotate and originally I rotated it to the 90 degrees so that it was facing in this direction and then 10 degrees to get the offset. And I just think it gives a nicer result once you embroider it. If you look at the one that we finished over here, it just looks really nice with a slight offset. In my opinion, of course, you are the one who's doing this, so you embroider it however you like, but I think they look really cute. And the way we did on the other ear for baby is we just offset it in the opposite direction. So we'll go ahead and embroider that. We're going to center it with our blue dot that we made with the water erasable marker. We'll center that we will do our trace and then embroider the ear.
and come back. We're back and it's almost finished. We're just on the last part of the letter L. One thing I forgot to mention is that we are running the machine at a speed of 800. The Brother Persona has the ability to run at a speed of 1,000 stitches per minute. And for this design, we are running at 800. And now we will show you how to take it off. Okay, I've taken it off the machine and now we just take the hoop apart. With Mighty Hoops, you need to be careful because they are magnetic and the magnets are quite strong. And with this design that I've embroidered, it has a couple of jump stitches. So I'll need to trim those jump stitches before I take the WSS off. And the reason is because it might pull and tug at those threads if I don't do that first. So I'll cut those and come back. I have finished cutting the jump stitches, although it looks like I missed one right here. Let me get that one. And once we've cut all the jump stitches, we can remove the WSS. And there's a debate whether you should just pull this off or wet the topper to dissolve it. I like to pull what I can pull and then whatever is still stuck on there, then I will wet that part and let it dry. If you just wet it, it's very sticky and you have to keep wetting it and blotting it and rubbing that off until it's not sticky anymore. I just feel like it's easier to go ahead and pull what I can pull and then I will just wet the little bits that I couldn't get to. The risk if you're going to pull it is that you will distort the threads or you might even catch the thread when you're trying to get your tweezers in there into a, a small area and you might end up pulling on a thread and pull that thread loose, which would be bad. We don't wanna do that. So that's the risk if you're pulling. But like I said, I like to at least get all the big areas pulled off. So this area I haven't done yet, I'll just wet that with a wet cloth or a wet paper towel. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and pull that off. Pull all the big areas off. And I'm just scraping, if it's a big enough area, I can just scrape it with my fingernail to get it loose and pull it off. If it's a smaller area, then I just get my tweezer out and tug on it with the tweezer. And then any small bits that are still left, we can just blot it with a wet paper towel. So that's how you do that. And then you'll also need to blot the ear where your mark is, your center mark, because we'll need to get that off. And it's water erasable, so we just blot it with a wet cloth and that should uh, go away. Sometimes it takes a second time doing it. After it dries, the mark might come back. And I believe the way these, these erasable pens work is that after a few days, it will just disappear but we want it to go away sooner, so we'll just blot it with something wet. Now we'll go ahead and do the other side, and I've already shown you all the techniques, so I'll just go ahead and get this side done and then show you what the end result looks like. Actually, before I go ahead and embroider this, I wanted to share a couple of things with you. What we've done is turn the elephant around in the opposite direction so that we can hoop the right ear, and this side is going to say baby, so what we also need to do is load our design, which is saved on the machine itself. And we've got baby, and it's also in the opposite direction and rotated 90 degrees and then an additional 10 degrees for the offset. So the total size of this design is 4.29 by 2.02 inches. And I've got my mark right here but I had to move a little bit away from the mark toward the outer edge of the ear and the reason is because I didn't clear the edge of the hoop right here 
you need to do a trace before you actually start embroidering to see how much room it's going to take up because the persona thinks that you might have a larger hoop than what you have. It doesn't understand the exact dimensions of mighty hoops. It only understands brother hoops. So since we're using a different brand of hoop, you want to make sure that you do the trace every time. And when I did the trace with it on the exact center mark, it came over too far. It was definitely going to hit this edge of the hoop somewhere on this side. So I've, I could do one of two things. I can either just adjust, move it away so that it clears the hoop edge, or I could rehoop it. And I don't think it's going to be noticeable the amount that I've adjusted it. So I'm not going to take it out and rehoop it. We'll just go ahead like it is. I think it's going to be fine. And the way I did that was simply just come over to the menu and you've got this manual trace right here and you can press this area uh, to go to each of these edges. So I wanted to see how far down it's going to be right here. And that shows you whether or not it's going to clear the edge of the hoop. Might be a little hard to tell in the video, but the needle, um, I don't know what this part's called, but the part the needle goes through right here is circular. And then there's this additional piece on it right here. And these two pieces stick out a little bit further than the needle itself. So we need those pieces to clear the edge of the hoop. With a different style of machine, you might actually be able to get your needle closer to the edge, but with the persona, we have to keep in mind these parts that are sticking out a little further. And you can even manually rotate the needle to come down and see where it hits. And right where it is, it's about as close to the edge as we can get without actually touching the hoop. So that's what we want. We want to be away from the edge of that hoop because it could damage the machine if we don't. So now we'll go ahead and let it embroider and then we'll come back. Okay, baby's all done. We'll take this off the machine and remove the hoop and cut the jump stitches and then take the WSS off and we'll just review these two. Okay folks, we are all done. I've removed it from the hoop and removed the WSS. Before doing that, I snipped all the jump stitches on the front and on the back. You, can, you know you'll have some on the back, but you may also have some on the front. So just keep that in mind. You want to snip those before you actually remove the WSS. So it turned out really pretty. I don't know what this little area is here. That's a, a small defect in the ear itself. Uh, we had to move this over a little bit or rehoop it. We ended up moving it over and you can see that it's not perfectly centered, but it still looks pretty good. It's not very far off. There's just a, a little bit of extra space on the right side versus the left side. But overall, I'm very happy with it. We've got a ribbon on the neck. Looks very nice. We are near the end of the video and I just want to review what we talked about today. We used our five and a half inch Mighty Hoop and we use the clear WSS and the Brother Persona embroidery machine. I'll put more information and links in the info under the video if you're interested in any of those products. A few things to remember is wind a bobbin thread the same color as your top thread. Be careful when you remove the topper after you embroider. You want to snip all the jump stitches and the tails before actually pulling on your topper because you take the risk of distorting your threads or possibly pulling a thread loose. So those are a couple of things to remember. I hope this video has been helpful.
please click on the like button if it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write in the comments below. And if you'd like to see other videos on helpful topics regarding embroidery and anything to do with the cubby stuffed animals, then please write those in the comments or send us an email. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your time today.